Selsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. And so my name is Laura Velkaita Los Viena, and uh, together with Agne Zuberkaita, we are both from Vilnius University. And today we will talk to you about the guidelines of the spoken easy language that we have been preparing during the SALSA project. So, Agne? Okay. Mm, but it's not uh, the full team that we have of our Vilnius University linguists. There is also Justyna Brzajta Lisetskiena, who is currently on maternity leave, and Inga Dareshkiena, who is currently mm -hmm. located, um, <laughs> locating, uh, located in the USA, but she is relocating back to Europe. So good news, because she is coming back to this project. And they are sending best greetings to all of you. And of course, let's not forget all of our colorful partners from all over, over Europe. So NGOs, universities, and public institutions from Sweden, Slovenia, Italy, Latvia, and Lithuania. So maybe just a short revision because we might probably already know what easy language is, but easy language is a modified form of a standard language with specific features. So that means that um, there might be uh, easy Lithuanian, easy Swedish, or easy Spanish. It depends on the language. And uh, the main goal is to facilitate language comprehension. So uh, the modifications usually are made not so much in terms of content and the ideas, but mostly for the structure and vocabulary. So. Uh, we have shorter words, shorter sentences, more frequent words, as you have already heard in this conference. So the main goal is to adapt everything to enhance readability and comprehensibility of information. And of course, let's not forget our target groups. So who can benefit from easy language? <laughs> so um, did you take a chance to reflect on who can benefit from easy language? So those are the target groups, main target groups, um, people with intellectual disabilities, people within the spectrum of autism, people with dyslexia, language impairments due to an injury, illness or trauma, uh, as well as people with dementia or second language speakers that haven't reached a certain uh, level of language proficiency yet. So easy language might be very useful for all of them. You might have already encountered this blue logo and it belongs to Inclusion Europe and you can see it all over Europe. So on the covers of texts, booklets, uh, magazines, newspapers. And what does it mean? If you see this logo, that means that the texts are adapted to easy to read and uh, target groups might recognize them very fast and they might know that uh, these texts are um, good for them and they can use them. So uh, this is how an easy to read text looks like. Mm, as you can see, each sentence starts in a new line. Um, the sentences are short, um, words are short as well. But the main question arises, so is reading and listening the same? You might answer that it's not the same at all. Some, uh, some things might, uh, mm, might be the same, but uh, speaking and listening can be more challenging than just reading in easy language. So when we speak, uh, it happens online. As you can see, <laughs> we are also speak speaking to you and there is time pressure. We are thinking what to tell. It is not easy to go back and re-listen if you have not uh, caught at some, some of my ideas, for example. Uh, of course, we also have to take care of the tone of the voice, intonation. Uh, we cannot control the intonation or tone of the voice of the speaker that speaks to us, for example. And of course, some body language elements are important. You might catch some cues uh, from them. Um, and uh, we can also repeat or be asked to repeat if we are having a two-way conversation. Uh, we might adapt to our conversation partner, or we might not, if um, we are uh, not having a great conversation. 
for example. Uh, we might have problems then uh, understanding each other. And we tend to speak in a less sophisticated way than we write anyway. So that is the main difference between written language and spoken language. So as you have seen, there are many ways to use spoken easy language. It's very useful for podcasts, news on the radio, audio books, audio guides, presentations, trainings or workshops for target groups. And uh, of course, we might use them in conversations to reach the best results for communication. So in friendly conversations, conversations at workplace, and conversations at doctor's office, tickets, box, or shops. So when we reflect on guidelines on easy lang of easy language, we mostly think about guidelines on how to um, use easy to read. But it's as we, we already said, it's not the same. We might need guidelines for spoken easy language because uh, some only some principles are the same. We need to think about many things that are not relevant for reading when we want to get the best out of spoken easy language. So that is why we had so much motivation to create and test these guidelines for spoken easy language all together with our wonderful team from all Europe. So maybe I might pass the word to Laura. <laughs> All right, so today I will try to present you the ideas that we had when developing those guidelines, what we based our guidelines on. I just saw to, to speak a bit slow. Yeah, um, for the trying to yeah. get yeah. the slow. Yeah, uh, and I will show you what we have for now. Uh, so the process of developing and preparing those guidelines basically looked like that. We start from the research, then we prepared the first draft. Afterwards, we tested the guidelines. And today you have seen uh, the panel discussing our testing and presenting some of the results. And finally, we're now at the last stage of refining the guidelines and making them available for everyone. And I'll tell you about all those four steps um, a bit more in detail. Uh, so first of all, we knew that there was a need of guidelines for spoken easy, but we also knew that there are a lot of professionals who are using spoken easy in their daily lives. So speech therapists, social workers, second language teachers, to name just a few. So we started from surveying specialists who are working with easy language to make sure they share their best advice with us and surveying users of easy language who can tell which strategies help them and which do not. And our next step was to look at the published research on easy language, on communicating with people with uh, any special needs and people facing challenges and kind of bring those recommendations together. So in terms of surveying the users of easy language and the specialists using an easy language, we have conducted a survey in um, 15 countries, but mainly in the countries of our partners, that is Italy, Lithuania, Latvia, Sweden, and Slovenia. And you can see the numbers of respondents in each country in this graph. As you can see, we had 446 people who responded, and we tried to reach uh, very different age groups and uh, uh, both uh, sexes of the respondents. And uh, they were either professionals who use easy language at work or end users, people who need easy language when communicating to them. Uh, so this was the first source of information. The second source of information, as I have already mentioned, came from published research. And having looked at those published papers, having looked at the survey results, we put together a list of 200 recommendations, which you can probably feel is a lot. <laughs> so to make it really useful for people who want to start using easy language, who want an advice on how to speak in easy language, we tried to group those recommendations, to describe them, 
to add examples, and to present the reader with a systematic and clear list they could actually use in their work. And uh, this brought us to the first version of our guidelines, uh, which we divided into five separate sections. And um, in these guidelines, we tried to think not only about how you adapt your language, how you choose simple words, how you simplify your sentences, but also about how you really make your conversation work. How can you be comprehensible and how can you keep the attention of your conversation partners? Because if they are not paying attention, you don't have a chance of communicating. Uh, so we had those five sections. The first one was on how to engage your conversation partner or listener. And we're trying to list very specific, clear advice mm -hmm. with some examples and with the examples that come from our testing sessions. Uh, then we give advice on how to structure your talk. And when we have heard today, structuring your talk uh, signaling the change of topic, signaling what happens is kind of taking your conversation partner by hand and kind of helping them walk through the conversation and feel confident about it. So it's equally important. We also remind some points about how to adapt your language, what to think about in terms of words, in terms of sentences, or the structure of the uh, ling linguistic part of your message. And we talk a lot about how to use your voice, how to use pauses. You've heard people from the uh, advisory group, from the uh, testing group today, who were talking a lot about how pauses were important and where they should be uh, longer, where they should be shorter, how they help us understand the information, how the body language helps. Uh, and finally, we give a list on, of advice on how and when to use supportive materials and what to pay attention to when we are preparing those. Uh, so these are the five big topics, and we have very specific advice in each one of those. And um, uh, we try, as I said, to be very specific with examples, with some nuances, which recommendations should work when and how to best employ them. Uh, we are also making sure uh, uh, that we communicate which recommendations work best in one-way communication, like radio shows or um, news on the radio or talking books, and which recommendations work better in two-way conversations, like conversations with your conversation partner. And we will be including uh, the icons that show which type of um, conversations, which recommendation works for best to signal that to our readers as well. So we have put together this uh, document and we tested it with different users in three different countries. You've heard about the testing today uh, already, but I'll just remind you. So we had three testing sites. We had Slovenia, Latvia, and Sweden, and uh, several groups that tested recommendations in all of them. Uh, in Slovenia, we had adult education setting, so the two-way communication situation, and we had radio news and audio books for one-way communication setting. And we checked a total of 24 of the guidelines that we suggest. We were actually happy to see that most of them were fully confirmed and confirmed very enthusiastically by our end users. We had some really good discussions and some really good suggestions from the end users on how to uh, improve some of the guidelines and how some of them were not working as well uh, as we thought they would. Uh, we had three new guidelines that were suggested and added to our list. And finally, we had a chance to reflect some of the guidelines that seemed to work for some group of the end users, but not for the others. Or as you already heard in the discussion today, some guidelines that depend very much on individuals and their individual preferences. And uh, we still believe it's worth thinking about those aspects of your language or of your visual support to your communication. But there is no one clear answer to which approach works the best for everyone. 
So what we are doing now is we are improving the guidelines that we had. We are taking all the feedback into account and we are putting a Celsius tested sign to those guidelines that have been tested to indicate that we are pretty confident about those. We do know those guidelines seem to work uh, well with the end users. And uh, once we have them ready, you will be able to find those guidelines, download them, use them in your work. Uh, they will be available in our website. You can find it by searching for Celsi. And uh, there will also be an online tool introducing those guidelines and uh, showing uh, situations where they can be useful. And if you are joining our conference in Slovenia in October, I'm sure we will be talking about that tool there. Thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, we are very happy to try and answer them. Selfsi, spoken easy language for social inclusion. Partners are Zavo Trisa, RTV Slovenia, Dyslexi Verbundet, Universitat de Studi di Pavia, Vieglas Valodas Agentura, Vilnius Universitetas, Vsi Informatio Scaupimo Irsklaidos Centras. Funded by the European Union.